Good morning, Wildcats. It is April 27th, and it is Monday. And when I woke up this morning, I thought it was Sunday. So I laid in bed, and I thought about, oh, I need to drink my coffee, and this is what I'm going to do today. And then I thought, oh, it's Monday. I have a meeting. I've got to get up. So, yikes, that's how my day's going. Hope your day's going a little bit better than mine. Um... For today's Artist of the Week book, we are going to read about Renoir. And I am i never expected that we would be home this, this long. Honestly, I thought we would go back to school, right? So did you. And I'm, I'm getting to the end of my books. I only brought home a few because I didn't think we would be here this long. So I think I only have two books left. So after these two books, I might just read to you any books because I don't have any books other books that are like not kids books don't have a lot of art books here they're all at school so we'll just see how it goes <laughs> but for today let's learn about Renoir dang dog um, and in this because Renoir was a French artist we're gonna have a lot of French words that Mrs. McKitterick can't pronounce hello Diggs wants to say hi can you say hi say hello my name is Dukes. I'm about 50 pounds heavy. He's my very unhealthy, very lazy dog. Okay, he's like a horse. So here's a portrait. He's gonna knock my camera over. Here's a portrait of Renoir. Pierre Auguste Renoir was born in France in 1841. He helped invent Impressionism, one of the most popular styles of painting in the history of art. Even when he was older and had painful arthritis, Renoir loved to paint and filled his pictures with warmth and happiness. The Impressionists enjoyed painting nature and joyful scenes of everyday life. Artists such as Claude Monet, who we talked about last week, Alfred Sicily and Camille Pissarro weren't interested in details. They used quick brushstrokes to give the feeling of a group of people or a river or a village the moment that they saw it. They also wanted to show how sunlight changes the color and look of things throughout the day. It's beautiful sunshine coming through the trees there. Oh, there's more pictures over here. Here's one. This. Beautiful everyday scenes. In one of Renoir's most famous paintings, Les Moulins de la Galette, you can almost feel the sunlight flickering through the trees as the leaves move gently in the breeze. This was Renoir's impression of what he was seeing. When Pierre-Auguste Renoir was four years old, his family moved from the small town of Limoges to Paris, the capital of France. They rented an apartment near the Louvre, the royal palace of King Louis Philippe and Queen Marie Amélie. I'm thinking I'm saying that right. Renoir saw the queen quite often when he played his favorite game of cops and robbers in the courtyard of the palace. Part of the royal palace was a museum where people could see the great paintings and sculptures collected by the rulers of France. As a young man, Renoir spent many hours in the Louvre studying the works of art of the Old Masters, Europe's greatest artists from the 16 and 1700s. Here's a cartoon here of the courtyard. And you've got all of these royal people. It says, please don't reveal my whereabouts, your highness. My name is Auguste Renoir. I'm hiding from the cops and I'm innocent. Innocent, I tell you. And his friends are going, where's Renoir? He popped in under the dress of the queen. I bet that's not a true story. Even when he was very little, Pierre-Auguste Renoir loved to draw. His father, a tailor, could hardly ever find the chalk he needed to mark directions on his fabric. This was because Pierre was always using the chalk to draw pictures all over the tailor shop, including the floor. Mr. and Mrs. Renoir never seemed to mind. They thought their son's artwork was pretty good. When Pierre was 13 years old, his parents arranged for him to get a job in a workshop, painting decorations on china plates, cups, and vases. So 
here's a little cartoon of Pierre's chalk um, adventures. And it says, I wonder if I should have charged him extra for the drawings. So their customer left with Pierre's chalk drawings all over his coat. At first, Pierre painted decorative flowers around the borders of the pieces. Later, he was promoted to painting portraits of famous people on the china. He learned about delicate colors and how to be a good craftsman. I'll show you this beautiful vase that they're talking about. That's so pretty. Renoir was making pretty good money at the workshop and later got other painting jobs that let him use his talent. When he was about 20 years old, he decided he would stop working so that he could study art more seriously. He joined the studio of a well-known artist named Charles Glier. Glier taught his students to paint and draw the old masters as they had done. This was the style of the day, the, and most likely to be accepted by the Salon, the yearly official government art show that we talked about last week with Monet stuff. In France, during the 1800s, it was important for an artist to have his work accepted by the Salon. Art collectors only liked to buy artwork that was approved by the Salon's judges. The types of paintings that were shown were usually carefully painted with dark colors and solid outlines. So I'm going to show you this one. It's called The Death of Socrates. These were the types of artwork that you would find in the Salon at the time. Often they showed a historical event or an ancient legend or were portraits of important people. Renoir enjoyed learning about these paintings in his class, but some students felt the style was much too old fashioned. Yeah, I, I don't particularly think I would want that hanging in my house. Pretty old fashioned. Three of Renoir's friends and classmates, Claude Monet, Alfred Sicily, and Frederic Basile, wanted to try new ways of painting. Claude Monet invited his friends to join him in the nearby forest of Fontainebleau to paint pictures of nature outdoors. Renoir decided to go because even though he enjoyed what he was learning in Charles's studio, he also liked the exciting new idea of painting natural scenes outside of a dark studio. At the time, no one really painted outside. Some artists might sketch scenes outdoors for their ideas, but they would always finish their paintings back in the studio. I have a message there. There's a little cartoon. We're outside here and it says, Hey Monet, I like painting out of doors. There's no one leaning over your shoulder bothering you all the time. Monet? Monet? I think the bear ate him. Oh no, wait, he's hiding up here in the tree. That's good, the bear didn't eat him. Renoir and his friends would often discuss their new ideas at local cafes and restaurants. These meetings were important for young artists. Renoir made this picture of his artist friends at the Inn of Mother Anthony. They may have been discussing how different colors look in the changing sunlight, or how putting their paint on, thinly, on thickly with quick brushstrokes might add life to their work. Some of the artists painted and sketched pictures on the walls of Mother Anthony's Inn just for fun. Renoir included one of his own sketches in the upper left corner. Let's see, they're sitting here, and there's sketches on the wall. One day, Renoir and Monet decided to paint some scenes of an area near Paris where people went to have a good time boating and swimming. These are some of the earliest Impressionist paintings ever done. Renoir and Monet tried things they had discussed at their cafe meetings. Working outdoors in the sunlight, both artists used bright colors and quick brushstrokes to make their scenes seem sparkling and alive. The paintings look natural and unposed and have a feeling of fun in the moment that it was happening. On this side, there's another one. So this one is by Monet. And then this one is by Renoir of the same spot. So they were practicing together very similar. <clears throat> Even though Renoir loved the look of his new works, he still did paintings in the older style just to get into the salon show. Some of these works, like Lisa with Sunshade, were accepted. But because the salon would never accept the new Impressionist paintings, Renoir and his friends decided to put on their own exhibition. One of the paintings that Renoir showed at the first Impressionist exhibit is shown on the next page. So I'll show you that. Pierre 
Auguste Renoir couldn't wait to find out what the public would think of his new paintings, but things didn't go very well. Most people didn't like the new works at all. They thought that the paintings were sloppily done and that the artist didn't pay any attention to detail. Some people thought the artists were playing a joke on them or that they might even be crazy. Fortunately, a few people in Paris did think the Impressionist works were quite good. One wealthy businessman asked Renoir to do some portraits of his family. Soon, other people asked Renoir to paint portraits of them. Pierre Auguste Renoir enjoyed doing these paintings and he was glad to be making money, but he also wanted to continue working on larger outdoor scenes of people having a good time. This one's called A Girl with a Wiring Can. Renoir often had his friends sit as models in his larger outdoor paintings. The lady holding the little dog in the luncheon of the boating party soon became Renoir's wife. This seems to be a common theme in all of our books. The model becomes the wife. This one here, right there, became his wife. Oh, just kidding. The book said the one holding the dog. I didn't even point to the right one. Where is she? That's right here. Pierre Auguste was happy to marry his favorite model, Aline. They had three sons, Pierre, Jean, and Claude. I think this is says that's his wife and Jean. Now Pierre Auguste Renoir could choose from a whole family of models. This is one of his kiddos playing. Occasionally, Renoir would paint landscapes and still lifes, but his favorite subjects were always people. He loved to show the joy of life in his paintings. Meanwhile, the public was finally starting to realize how beautiful the Impressionist paintings were. But after years of hard work, and just when things were going great, Renoir decided to change his painting style. So here were some of the good ones that he was starting to get recognized for. And then here's the little cartoon that says, it is us, the public again. We've changed our minds. Yeah, we love Impressionism now. Sorry about the mix-up. And then all of them go, oh, well, I guess it's time for a change. Renoir felt <clears throat> he had done all he wanted to do with the Impressionist style. He wasn't exactly bored with it. He just thought it was time for something new. He decided to look for a way to use some of the things he had learned from studying the old masters years before. He tried combining their carefully drawn shapes with the light and bright colors of Impressionism. In Umbrellas, you can see how Renoir started to change things right in the middle of a painting. The lady and the two girls on the right, so here, this is the painting we're talking about. Let me see if I can get in here, okay. The lady and the two girls on the right are done in the Impressionist style with quick feathery brushstrokes and delicate colors. The people on the left, as well as the umbrellas, look smoother and seem more like solid objects. Renoir painted them using duller colors and solid outlines. So he mixed his old style with his new technique. Renoir kept working to find just the right style of painting that would satisfy him. Near the end of his life, he finally seemed happy with his work. Just before he died, at the age of 78, he told a friend, I think I'm beginning to understand something about painting. When he was 78, he decided that he finally knew how to be a painter. All right, guys, thanks for joining me this week, and I will see you next week.